Guys, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to make pizza at home. Let's do it. All right, step one, we're just gonna bloom our yeast. So to this bowl, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, I am making two pizzas, so everything for me is gonna be double. I have some warm water, I'm gonna stick in there. And I like to dissolve the water with the sugar, or I should say dissolve the sugar into the water first. It doesn't have to be all the way. And then I go in and add in one tablespoon of active yeast. Okay, now we're just gonna leave this for the yeast to be activated. It's gonna take about 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and you can see that the yeast has been activated. You see all that froth in the middle, that's what that means. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna add two cups of flour to this, okay? So this is just an initial um, addition of flour to bring it all together and then we're gonna leave it to rest. And then after this is when we add more flour and actually knead. So for now, just two cups of flour in there. Mix this together. And this is gonna be our first uh, 30 minute rest or so. Um, once again, you're gonna see the yeast activate. You're gonna see some bubbles. And that is what we want, okay? All right, again, we're gonna leave this to rest for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so while we have that first batch of flour there um, working with the yeast, we're gonna make our sauce. So my sauce is really easy, okay? We have a half cup of just water in here. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. And we're just gonna give that a second, not long at all. And you'll actually see the water turn just a slight green. And the only reason for this is just to bring out the flavors of the Italian season right away. So once the water comes to a boil, okay, we're gonna go ahead and dump one can of just, I mean, I have just regular Hunt's pasta sauce here. And we're just gonna dump that in there. And we're gonna turn this down to low. And we're just gonna leave this to simmer for about 10 minutes, okay? That's what the half cup of water was for, so that any evaporation that takes place now, you don't um, dry out the sauce too much. So after 10 minutes, you're just gonna turn it off and leave it to rest and let all those flavors melt together. Okay, so my first 30 minutes is up. You can see all the bubbles formed. You can see a big difference from when we first put this all together, all right? We're just gonna put some olive oil if you don't have olive oil, that's okay. You could um, use vegetable oil or whatever you have. And then we're just gonna set that aside. Inside here, I have three cups of flour. And I'm gonna add some more sugar. This is optional, okay? This is up to you. I do this because I want my dough to be just a little sweeter. And we're gonna add a pinch of salt. From here, we're gonna dump this out onto the counter, the full three cups, okay? And then we're gonna dump our whole mixture right onto the flour. You could of course do this in a large bowl. I am just mixing this all together here because I don't have a bowl large enough for two pizzas, okay? You're gonna knead all this together and it might seem a little messy and sticky at the start, but once you knead this, it's gonna start forming a nice elastic dough. Okay, you're gonna knead this for about 10 minutes. Um, you're gonna keep your flour close by in case you need some more. And if you have a stand mixer, obviously you would go into your stand mixer here and set this on like medium 
and let this knead for about um, other videos say six minutes I still think ten minutes is good and um, I won't go in detail on how to knead I'll leave a little link on the top right around here to show you um, when I went into detail of how to knead dough so when we come back you're gonna see this dough all come together all right so I've kneaded this dough for about 10 minutes or so and you can see it's all come together it's nice and stretchy and now all we're gonna do is just cover this dough with just a little bit of oil nothing too much because we are just gonna put this into the bowl and let it rise so now this is gonna rise for about 30 minutes to an hour it all depends on the conditions you have it should be in a warm place um, so you could stick this in an oven that's off the pilot light alone will keep it warm enough <clears throat> me I could just leave this on the countertop because Trinidad is very hot so we're just gonna cover this down and leave this to rise for about 30 minutes to an hour again depending on conditions all right, so it's been about 30 minutes and you could see that the dough has doubled in size. So at this point, you could choose to actually skip this step and go straight into rolling this out and baking it. But I think it's really good to actually punch this down, take all the air out. Okay, so I'm just gonna punch this down, fold it over itself, just to make sure you're getting rid of all the air. And now you're actually going to put it right back into the bowl and you're going to let it do a second rise. Okay, so it's been the other, the second 30, 40 minutes. So we just want to check and make sure the dough has risen again. Clearly it has, right? So once we're confident the dough is ready for the oven, we're actually going to go ahead and set this oven to preheat. When it comes to the oven, all right, you wanna make sure that the rack is set from the second level from the bottom, okay? Not the middle, not the top, second rack from the bottom, all right? You're gonna set your oven to 475 and let this preheat while you get your dough stretched out and put your toppings on. All right, so your oven is ready to go. It's preheating and you're ready to divide your dough. Again, I'm saying divide the dough because I'm making two pizzas. Um, right here, I have my sauce ready to go. I have some cheese and I have my toppings. All right, um, so we go ahead and bring the dough out. Again. This is gonna fold us over on each other and we're gonna knock some of the air out of it, all right? If you need to, you could just put some oil or a little flour on the countertop so that it doesn't stick. So we're gonna separate this in two, in my case, because um, I'm making two pizzas. So, we get these into two separate balls. And then we're gonna go ahead and stretch these out. All right, so when it's time to stretch out, you know, I have my pizza pan here that I'm gonna use. And what we're gonna do is drop some cornmeal down on your countertop. If you don't have cornmeal, you could use um, flour. Cornmeal just helps it um, be non-stick a little better. And then you're going to put some cornmeal on your pizza pan as well. Again, that's going to help it come off when it's time to actually cut and eat this pizza. So, you take one of the walls you just made and you just start stretching it out. And you will feel the um, you will feel the cornmeal sticking to it 
and that's all right that is actually a good thing it's gonna help it once again be more non-stick all right once you get it kind of worked out a little bit go ahead and bring your pizza pan over here stick him on it again you could use a rolling pin if you want to I am just gonna slowly stretch this out and then if it seems to be pulling too much on you you could actually leave it to rest for about 10 minutes let it go relax and then it'll stretch a lot easier so I'll come back once I have this all stretched out and then we'll go ahead and top it all right so I have mine on my pizza pan here not perfectly circle but you know that's how it is and then we're just gonna go ahead and put some sauce on it you know obviously it's up to you how much sauce you want to put we're gonna get spread out evenly um, I actually rather go all the way to the edge um, because as this is in the oven it is gonna expand so <clears throat> to me this gives just the right crust when I go all the way to the edge okay then we're gonna put cheese don't overdo the cheese um, I see a lot of people just put in way way too much cheese and then when you're done you're not gonna be tasting pizza you're just gonna be tasting cheese so you know put the cheese on but don't overdo it okay like for me right here is actually enough and then I'm just gonna put my toppings on which is onions I am gonna put pineapple which I know a lot of people think doesn't belong on pizza if you don't want it on pizza then don't put it your call and lastly we are gonna put some ham and then from here we're gonna stick it into the oven okay nine minutes in you're gonna rotate it 180 degrees close them back up and bake them for another nine minutes again all right and that is it all right so my first nine minutes is up you you see how much is already rice okay so we're just gonna turn this 180 degrees stick it back in there for the second nine minutes so second nine minutes up we're gonna take a sucker out we're gonna leave them to cool for about five minutes and then we'll cut them up here we go guys uh, I want to show you how easy this pizza moves about see and that's because of the cornmeal I didn't do anything to unstick this it, that's how it is all right and I mean that's it now we could just cut this you're gonna have to hold it because it slides all over all right and guys pizza it was that easy all right guys remember subscribe let me know what to cook next time and see you guys mm. yeah, I feel really.